showing kindness or grace, that I'm not going to allow my father's song to take your life. Good morning. Welcome to First Church. My name is Patrice Hall, and thank you for joining us today. Before we hear the word of God from our very own Dr. Dennis W. Bishop, I have a few announcements to share. Please mark your calendar for the FWBC Seniors and Retirees meeting. We are excited that we can meet in person again here at the church and look forward to seeing everyone. We'd also like to invite anyone interested in becoming a member to attend our meeting this coming Tuesday, January 24th at 1130 a.m. If you have any questions, please contact Deaconess Sarah Stephanie or Minister Tamara Moore. FWBC Youth, the time has come. If you are interested in flagging with FWBC Flag Ministry, Please come out today, immediately after service in the old chapel. Parents or guardians are required to attend the first meeting. Are you interested in community outreach and service? Do you have a love and passion for sharing the love of Jesus in the community so people can see him with a little flesh on? We'll need you to sign up for the evangelism ministry. As our pastor is getting us ready for the ministry in 2023, the evangelism ministry is getting geared up as well. So be prayerful and then come ready to share your ideas and passion for the service in the community. You may call or text Minister Nadia at 743-867-2561 or you can email her at r-o-n-y-a-l-e-f at yahoo.com. We look forward to serving you in the new year. Do you have a youth that enjoys helping others and wants to serve? The youth ministry is a great way to start. The goal is to create mission-minded kids who grow into adults who still enjoy serving their communities as they tell others about Jesus. And what a goal that is. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For more information, contact Minister Pamela Goodine. You may email her at PamelaGoodine35 at gmail.com, or you may call her at 336-986-0251. United in Prayer for Youth Conference calls will be held on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. beginning February 2nd. This call is for everyone that cares to join, especially the youth. Each week, volunteers are needed to cover the following prayers. Divine intervention, thine will be done. Divine covering and deliverance. Strength to overcome cares and burdens. Families and youths are encouraged to sign up to read scripture and prayer or sing please contact Preacher Pam or Dr. Studevent to sign up for the conference call number and ID. We thank you for your continued support of FWBC. It is important that we continue to contribute to our church home. We invite you to give. Visit our website at www.firstwatown.org and click the giving link. We are so happy to have you here at First Church here at First Watertown, everybody is somebody and nobody is all but Christ. Be blessed. We're here, can we say nobody greater? Nobody greater. Nobody.
nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater. Your name is above all names. Above all names, you're worthy of our praise. Worthy of our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 Oh, your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of our praise. Worthy of our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Say, mighty are the works of your hand. Say, mighty, 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 mighty. Say, mighty, 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 mighty. Say, mighty, are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Say, mighty, are the works of your hand. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Say, mighty are the works of your hand. Say, mighty are the works of your hand. Say mighty, 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 mighty. 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 Say mighty are the works of your hand. Say mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Say 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 mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Come on, all over this place. Say mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty. Say mighty, 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 mighty. Say mighty, 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 mighty. You're holy, 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 holy. 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 Holy, 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 holy. You're holy, 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 holy. You're holy, 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 holy. We're grateful, 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 grateful. Grateful, 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 grateful. We're grateful, 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 grateful. We're grateful, 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 grateful. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. Say, mighty are the works of your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise. Say mighty are the works of your hand. Oh, mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. As I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Come on, if you know we serve a great God. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is your opportunity to give your great God a great praise. Nobody great. All over this place. Open your mouth and give the Lord praise. Nobody greater. Hallelujah. He reigns forever. Hallelujah. No matter what it looks like, the Lord reigns forever. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. We bless the name of the Lord. Come on all over this place. Just tell the Lord thank you. 
Come on, just tell the Lord, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I was raised whenever thank someone you, does something great for you. Praise the Lord. And you are appreciative and of what he's done. There should be a thank you that comes out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of you have not given God thanks all week long. Yeah. But since we're here in his house, we ought to give the Lord praise. That's it. Oh, my side. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody needed something from the Lord. And I dare not discount them from coming in this place and not getting yeah, what yeah, the Lord yeah, has for yeah. them. So one more time, can we give the Lord praise? Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. We serve a mighty God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Angels bow before him. Worthy Heaven and earth adore him. Worthy what God. a mighty God we serve. Worthy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy God. Hallelujah. Anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord? Yes, sir. He I has kept glad. you all week long. Glad. And for that, we're grateful. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, Father yeah. God, we love you today. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your power yeah. in this place, oh God. Yeah. Father God, we thank you that you're here to deliver and set free, God. Yeah. We thank you that you're here to save souls now, God, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now touch this congregation, God. We thank you that you're meeting needs. Even as I release my voice in this place, oh God, we thank you that you're meeting needs. We thank you that you're healing, God. We thank you that you're sending breakthrough now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. God, anoint your manservant now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for a blessed word now. We thank you for a blessed word now. We thank you for a blessed word now that shall bring about change. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. Yeah. In Jesus' name we In pray. Name. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Go ahead and get your reading material. Go ahead and get your reading material. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless your name, Jesus. We not only bless your name, but we honor your name. And we honor your presence today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Woo! Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Woo. Somebody shout miracles. Come on, say it again. Miracles. Listen, somebody shout it out in the air. Miracles are happening right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody bless God for his miracle working power. You may not be able to see what the Lord is doing for somebody right now, but just shout miracles are taking place right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Yes, hallelujah, God. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Somebody confess that he is a miracle working God. And miracles are happening right now. You may not be able to see it, but miracles are happening right now. Not only in this auditorium, but outside of this place right now. Because of the praise that is going up from this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said some miracles are taking place outside of here. Because of the praise and the adoration that is going on in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Any mountain movers in here today? Any mountain movers? I said, are there any mountain movers in here? Anybody learning how to speak to the mountain? You do know mountains have ears, don't you? Anybody knowing how to speak to your mountain? Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Miracles are taking place right now. Not only in here, but out of here. On the outside. In other states. In other cities. I'm sensing the miracle working power of God in other places as we bless him in this place. Zechariah chapter 4, and let's do verses uh, 6. Let's do, because I want to try to cover the majority of this today. Uh, I want to cover a big chunk of it today. So let's just start reading in verse 6, and I'll, I'll tell you in a few minutes where we're going to stop reading. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Let's stand together for the reading of this word and reverence this word that God is speaking to this house and to everybody who's not able to get into this house but hearing us. You all don't know this message is, is everywhere. People are sharing it many places and comments are coming and texts are coming back from people that are sharing this word with other people that's not even in this town, not even in the state of North Carolina. And people are getting a hold of what God is saying to all of us and any of us that have ear to hear and will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to his people. Let's start reading at verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, this is the King James Version, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, or saying, grace, grace, unto it. Let's do verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation. Listen to that. Who, who laid the foundation? Now, do y'all remember the onset? I told you that this is a prophetic word. How many of y'all remember that? It's not a word of knowledge. It is a word of prophecy. It is a prophetic word. It has not been fulfilled, well, it has now, but it wasn't then. It wasn't fulfilled when these words were spoken. These words were spoken prophetically for things that were going to take place in the future. Already been fulfilled now, but, I, but, but I, I'll show you in just a little, in a little while that these words are still true. They're still faithful. They're still valid, and they're still prophetic because there are some things that God is going to do from what he has already started doing. Amen? So let's read. Let's read. He says, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. That's the future. That's the future. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. Go ahead and look down your aisle and give somebody a great big God bless you. Tell them, let's talk, let's talk. Look down there and tell somebody, let's talk. Tell them, let's talk together. In other words, can I talk to you? <laughs> Really wanna know? Can I talk? <laughs> Who art thou? Who art thou? O great 
mountain. Let me ask you a question. How y'all doing with your mountain? What do we say a mountain symbolizes? Obstacles? Barriers? Distractions? Challenges? Huh? Issues? All of these are good. So let me ask you again then, since you've got a better understanding now of what we're talking about, because some people, that's good, y'all. That's really good. Y'all give the sound text a hand. Y'all give them a hand. Thank y'all. That's good. That's good. That's good. Will you, will you set that on course? Huh? Who? Oh, Rodney right back there too? Rodney right Harris? Y'all setting it on course? All right. Tell Rod that sounds good. Tell him that's good. Yeah. Run back there and tell him that sounds good. So he won't turn me, so he won't turn me again. Oh, he's in the back. He can hear me. Oh, I thought you were saying he was behind this wall. All right, y'all give Rodney a hand too. He's back there. He's here in the sound room back there. Thank you, Rod. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. Y'all don't know what sound can do for you or do against you. Or do you know? Man, sound can sound sound will help me sound will help me land across this podium up here. Sound, sound, lack of sound to have y'all taking me off this platform. Man, thank you, Rod. That's good. Thank you, Will. Thank y'all. Who art thou? Since you know now, since you've been told, many have shouted out what the mountain is or what mountains represent. How are you doing with your mountains? It's what? Movable. Who said that? Movable. How you doing with your mountain? Huh? It's a mole here. It's coming down? You're talking about your obstacles, your issues, your challenges, stuff like that. Listen to what he says. The mountain before Zerubbabel was addressed according to this scripture, as a personality. That's what he talks about it as, a personality. Now, those of us that are spiritual, sometimes look at personalities behind the challenges that we sometimes face. That's what he's saying here. There were personalities behind the challenges that Zerubbabel was facing. There are personalities behind the challenges, oftentimes, that you and I will face. Now, do we handle that personality in the natural? No. How do we handle that personality? In the spirit. That's why he moves on down to say to him that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Personalities behind the challenges that we face must be handled in the spirit. To overcome our challenges, those personalities, those persons. We don't resort to hate. We don't resort to trying to get even. We got to stay focused on God. See, what he was doing was, through the prophet Zechariah, God was calling for the attention for Zerubbabel to be on God. Personality may be there, the issue may be there, the challenge may be there, the obstacle may be there, but he says you can't focus on that because that, that's the mountain. And if you allow that mountain to be bigger than your God is, you're going to be defeated already. Somebody shout hallelujah. To overcome our challenges then, we need to learn to speak to the powers 
that be? We got to learn. We got to understand. We got to know. We got to see the need to speak to these powers so that they will give way and won't defeat us. Now, how do you speak to that mountain? Because I'm going to open you up right now and tell you the mountain have ears. Did y'all know that? Obstacles have ears. Challenges have ears. Personalities behind the challenges have ears. Look at Mark, St. Mark 11.23. St. Mark 11.23. And I'm going to go forward from here. St. Mark 11.23. St. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. When you're there, say amen. Let's read it together. Jesus says this in St. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Let's read it. For verily I say unto you that, that, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou, I said to you, mountain have ears. And Jesus says what you got to do is speak to the mountain. And when you speak to that challenge or speak to that obstacle or speak to that personality behind the challenge, he says that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what? Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And uh, oh, oh, this is the key. This is the key. Because you can't speak and doubt at the same time. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, this is the key. We speak and then we turn around and curse what we speak. Are you here? I hear a whole lot. That's why I'm, listen, that's why I'm sometimes skeptical. Well, well, I'm not skeptical. Don't let me use that. Well, yes, I am sometimes. Sometimes that's why I'm skeptical when I hear certain people say, I'm praying for you. I don't mind you praying for me. Listen, I appreciate your prayers. But then when I hear those people, what make me skeptical sometimes is that when I hear you say you're praying for me and then you turn around and cursing what you prayed, blessings and curses that come out of the same mouth. If you, if you say, I'm praying for God to speak to pastor, to do something with pastor, to tell pastor something, to show pastor something, to lead pastor in the direction, to have him to talk about this, to have him to get that, to have him to get this, to have him to go after that, I, I'm praying and believing God. Listen, you can't turn around with somebody else and say, you know, we've been praying for him a long time, but he ain't going to change. Well, if I ain't going to change, why are you still praying? That's what makes me skeptical because if you're going to bring down the mountain, you can't build it up at the same time you're bringing it down. And that's just not me. I'm just using me as an example because I'm scared to use you because I didn't ask you if I could use you. <laughs> I'm just using me as an example because I hear people say that a lot of time. I'm praying for you. But then after you get outside the door, you get two or three other people, and you say, huh, I'm, I'm praying for that hussy. <laughs> to me, it throws the prayer off balance, because if you're thinking that she's a hussy, why are you even praying for her? And if you're praying for her, why are you going to call her a hussy? If I'm asking God to change the hussy, I'm just believing he's changing her. And so when I step outside the door and speak to somebody else, I got to tell them, she's a great woman. She's a powerful woman. Somebody repeat this after me. Mountain, have ears. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not, what? Doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you have said shall, what? Come to pass, you shall have, 
whatsoever you say. Now, if I say I'm going to win the lottery tomorrow and I'm going to be $435 million richer than I am today and it doesn't happen, Come on, let's be real. Because sometimes we're saying stuff to stuff that's not in the will of God, nor in the word of God. Man, I could tell y'all a story that'll blow your mind right now, but I better hold on to it. Listen. The key to this whole thing that he's talking about in moving obstacles, challenges, issues, mountains, is that you can't doubt it. You gotta believe. And you notice something I saw in the scriptures, of the scriptures that I read, as they were pertaining to speaking to mountains, Every scripture I read was connected or tied to believing. It was tied to faith. Every scripture that I read thus far, and I've read several of them, they were tied to faith, tied to belief, tied to not doubting. You can't speak to a mountain and then doubt what you spoke. Because said again, mountain have ears. Now, look at this, look at this. Since mountains have ears, challenges of life hear words of fear, and they hear words of faith. Come on and say that with me. Challenges of life. Here's words of faith or fear. And here's what they do when they hear words of faith or words of fear. Here's what they do. They respond. Now, if Romans 10, 17 tells us so then, faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. What do you think happens when we speak to mountains? Since mountains have ears, they hear words of fear. They hear you speaking boldly when you got a whole lot of folk rallying behind you. But when the benediction is given and we go off of the platform, the very words that God spoke up here, I've got to go off of the platform in the same faith and belief of what I'm believing while I'm standing up here and folk are rallying around me. Somebody shout yes. yes. When you get home, you got to get home, and if nobody's there but just you, and the words that you spoke in faith, those words have to become active in a house where there's nobody but you and those words. When the crowd is gone, when the hoopla is down, when there's nobody amen, when nobody's running around the building, after the run is over, after the shout is over, after the tongue has been spoken, after the glory hallelujah has gone up before the Lord, and it's just you, and that challenge, you got to still speak faith. Who are your great mountain? When you say one thing in public ears, you got to know how to speak it to just the mountain. When you say one thing in front of 10,000 folk, you got to know how to speak it when it's just you and the mountain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's something else I want to tell you. You can't wait to look at the picture 
and then speak what you think it's going to be. You got to look at the grimace of pictures and see something beautiful that God is doing by faith in Jesus' name and speak it. I sometimes get thrown off by people who can only, hallelujah, after the manifestation. Honey, I'm going to hallelujah before the manifestation. I'm going to bless God before the manifestation. Some people don't want to speak it because in their heart they're saying, well, what if? That's a doubt. What if God doesn't do it this way? Well, he may not do it that way. But if my faith says he's going to do it, I believe he's going to do it so that he gets the glory and he gets the honor out of it. And I shout hallelujah before the manifestation. Anybody in here today want to shout hallelujah while you're with me? Challenges of life, my brothers and sisters. Here's words of fear or words of faith and respond. Sometimes the people you're praying for and not seeing anything happening got more faith in what they're believing God to do than you do. You didn't get that, so let me say it again. Sometimes people that you're praying for and you're turning around and cursing the seed of faith of what you're praying for, sometimes those people got more faith in believing God's going to do something with me, change me, speak to me, draw me, than, than the faith you got. Because we start looking at the circumstance, the challenge, the obstacle. The issue, the mountain. I know when you look at it, you can't flip, flop, back, and forth. When you look at it, you don't have to deny it, but you ain't got a claim it's going to keep standing. If I prayed, laid it at the feet of God, spoke to that mountain that's got ears that heard me and knew I was speaking in faith. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm going to go on my way whistling hallelujahs. But a lot of times doubt set in because it didn't happen today. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. If you prayed it in faith, it happened today. Now, it may take 21 days to manifest, but I heard you today. What, what you say about that, Daniel? Daniel prayed, and it took 21 days before the answer showed up. Or can I use the word manifest? And by the time the angel got there with the answer, Daniel had a two. I prayed this prayer 21 days. I know it, Daniel. I know what the angel said. I know it. I got it. Pump the brakes, Daniel. You know how we do. Pump the brakes. I called pastor two hours ago and he ain't got to the hospital yet. Pump your brakes. Maybe I wasn't supposed to get there then, but when I mentioned it to God, God heard it right then. I prayed it in faith. I believe it. And as long as he shows up, I may have been dealing with two other people before I got to. I'm just using me as an example because I can't use you because I didn't ask your permission. Look down your road, tell somebody, pump the brakes, pump the brakes, pump, pump your brakes. <laughs> Daniel, man, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> I could tell you Daniel had a tube. 
I prayed this prayer 21 days. I know it, Daniel. This... Can I help some of y'all? The angel said, you don't know what I had to go through to get here. Shh. Some, of, some of y'all pouting and blowing up when folk come two hours late. And what you ought to be doing is blessing God because they were able to get there. You don't know what some people got to go through to get where they're trying to get. And, and, and why you all blowed up and all and all and with a two. Sometimes you ought to start blessing God and asking God, is everything all right with them? And if not God, pull them through. Bring them through Jesus. He said, I had to wrestle with the prince of Persia. I had to wrestle with the powers of the airwaves. I had to wrestle with demons and devils that did not want me to come through. And finally, God sent another angel and he wrestled with me and got back what I needed. And here I am in Jesus' name. Somebody shout yes. Shouting in the atmosphere, mountains have ears. And some of us don't just get upset with human physical personalities. Some of us got the nerve and the audacity to get upset with God. That when he shows up, you trying to act like Martha. If you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. That's St. John chapter 11. And Jesus says, I'm here and I'm on time. Don't you like it when it look like God is late? He's always on time. When we thought he should have been here yesterday, he shows up today and says, I was. No, that ain't what he said. He said, I am. Jesus said to Martha, I'm here now, baby. Calm down. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Hold on. Stop rolling your neck. Pop in your head, baby. Hold on, I'm here. But you're late, Jesus. We sent you the letter a few days ago. Y'all remember? Listen, if you don't know it, St. John chapter 11, read it. When Jesus got the letter and read it, he said to the disciples, Lazarus is sick. And they said, well, we better get ready to go. Jesus, no, I ain't going yet. He got the next note that says, okay, Jesus, I'm paraphrasing it. St. John didn't put all this into it. John didn't have the nerve to put all of it into it. He gets the second letter that says, your friend Lazarus is dead. Jesus said, now let's go. Ha! <laughs> Glory. Now let's get up and go. And I can imagine, just like some of us, those disciples were saying, well, why? No, they didn't do it like that. Come here, Philip. Come here, Bartholomew. Now, I'm gonna, I want to say something to y'all, but you can't tell Jesus or the other disciples. We got our word. Why in the world with Jesus knowing he was just sick and he could have went and healed him, but he wouldn't go. Why did he wait until he died? And now he's saying, let's go. And here's what happens when we do that. Philip buys into it. Bartholomew buys into it. And here's their response. You know, you're right. I wonder why Jesus did wait until he died. And then by the time he shows up in their town at their house in Bethany, 
and the word gets back to the house where they were mourning that Jesus is here, Martha runs out. Oh, man, can you imagine how she was running? She was giving energy to that mountain. <laughs> Listen, she was giving energy that the mountain recognized. And she gets to Jesus. And then she blurts out at him. If you would have been. Not, 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 hello, Jesus. How you doing? Glad you made it. Even though he's dead, glad you still made it. Maybe you came to do the eulogy. <laughs> and Jesus was saying, no, I didn't come to bury him. You've already buried him. I came to get him back up. I waited as long as I did because I want to show you when you have gone to the farthest extent of what you can go to, that man's extremity becomes God's opportunity. I want to show you that I can do better than raise him up. I want to show you I can call him back to life and he'll live. Oh, well, we know he's going to live again in the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Mountains have ears. Jesus said, y'all roll the stone back from the door. Read the 11th chapter of St. John. Let's move forward in the message. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. He says, but if you believe that those things which you have said shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. Now, a lot of times I hear people that like to quote this scripture, but in certain things, and pertaining to certain people, it doesn't apply. I'm thinking sometimes when it seems like it's not happening, it's because that obstacle or that challenge or that issue or that personality have ears. And sometimes because they hear you speak things of faith in one setting, and then you turn right around and you curse or doubt the thing that you speak for in a setting didn't happen or it doesn't happen or it's not happening or it is happening but sometimes taking longer. Notice this. Challenges of life hears words of fear or faith and that's why I said it respond. They either grow bold or they blow up. They either grow bold or they come down to a plane or a molehill. Then, therefore, we need to speak the word of God to overcome the powers of behind the challenges that's plaguing our lives. Well, Pastor, how do I do that? Well, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we were in it a, a few Sundays ago, so if you want to turn to it, you can turn to it again, but you don't particularly have to because I'm going to give it to you right now. But if you want to turn with me, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to deal with verses 45 through 47 that we did not get to when we were in 1 Samuel a few Sundays ago. Now, Goliath heard David's confession of faith. And he did what? He fell. He went down. He heard David's confession of faith and he hit the ground. See, this is what mountain language is all about. David spoke to the giant obstacle. He spoke it right in front of him. 
He spoke it in front of the people of Israel. And here's what he said in verses 45 through 47. And I paraphrase some of this. He said before the people of Israel and before Goliath, he says, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. Now, if he wasn't speaking to the mountain like he would have supposed to, here's where he would have fallen off the porch. He stands up and speaks words of faith to Goliath before Israel. You've come to me with sword, spear, javelin, as big as you are. And here's where he would have fallen off. And now I'm getting ready to haul butt. I'm getting ready to run. No, 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 no. That's not what he said. Because if he would have said that, what would have happened? The ears of that mountain, of that giant Goliath, would have recognized his fear and would have picked him up with one finger and tore him apart. He was just a young boy. But here's what he said. But, I told you if he hadn't spoke faith, he would have hauled butt. But he didn't haul butt. He stood firm and showed his butt. But, I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's Amens. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied, he says, today, the Lord will conquer you. Somebody just shout today. The Lord will conquer you. Shout today. God will heal you. Shout today. God will restore you. Shout today. Today. David said, I ain't even engaged in this battle yet, but I already know that victory is mine today. Can somebody just shout today for somebody that's not here? I told you mountains have. Shout it out to the mountain today. My daddy ain't here, but he's going to change today. My mom's not here, but she going to change today. A family member is going to change from their ways today. Somebody in my family is going to be healed and made whole today. I know what the report says. The report says give it about six months. But somebody shout today. Y'all don't know, y'all don't know that when you speak the mountains, God's got a way of fast forwarding what that mountain hears, and it doesn't take six months. When can it happen? Let me tell you what the Spirit is saying. Now some of y'all going to go right back to the situation that had manifested while you were in here and you're going to start doubting. Because the enemy going to say to you, well, Pastor, had you saying all that today stuff? And look at him. Look at him now. Look, 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 at, look at the situation now. No, no. When you look at the situation, you look at it and listen, do it confidently today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Today you're going to wake up. Today you're going to come out of this. Today it's going to happen. Today the coma has to go. Today we're going to cancel the assignment of the enemy. Somebody shout hallelujah. And while you're shouting hallelujah, put today on the end of it. Hallelujah. Today. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah, Jesus. Today, 
I said today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not six months from now. Today. Listen to what he said. He hadn't even, it hadn't manifested in the natural yet. Goliath standing there, mountains have, Goliath standing there, probably saying to himself, this little red-headed rut thinks the whole army of Israel couldn't defeat me. Now, you know why I call him a red-headed rut? Because he was the last son of Jesse. And that's how the scripture described him. Little red-headed boy out in the field taking care of a flock. Little dirty Red headed boy. Somebody say, paint the picture. A little bib overall wary, short, red headed boy calls himself going to defeat me. Can we go again? A little bro game. Wary. Bib overall strutting. Little red headed rat calls himself going to defeat me. Goliath said, and now he's trying to have a nerve. <laughs> To show out in front of the armies of Israel. And so what I was going to do by just jacking him up. Now I'm going to jack him up and tear him apart. Anybody ever faced an issue like that? That the more you stand on faith sometimes seems like, seems like the issue still progresses in a downward spiral, that's because you ain't shouted today yet. Somebody shout today. I'm almost done. I'm three-fourths of the way. He says, today, the Lord will conquer you. And now, after the Lord conquers you, Notice how he put that. After the Lord do what God alone can do, then I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to cut off your head. And then I'm going to give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world Somebody say mountains got ears. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Now, why you've been happy about, can I ask you a question? How many of you all are walking in faith to the point that the whole world know that there's a God of your life? Now, 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 listen, we answer that, but if that's the case, mountain have ears. They recognize whether you got fear or faith. Then if you say, yeah, yeah, that's me, that's me, I'm doing just that, then you got to be careful what you say in the presence of that challenge. If 10 people are coming back with a negative report, 
Two ought to have a faithful report. Yeah, there were giants in the land. And yes, there were grapes that looked just like they said they looked. Grapes so big that we couldn't just bring them to you and, uh, and give, you a, give you a sample of it. We, 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 had to, we had to prop those grapes up. They are so big. They're so pretty. They're so juicy. We had to prop them up, and we had to bring them on stage. We couldn't just drag them to you. We would have ruined the grape. But, but there are giants in the land, and two of them says, but we are well able. Somebody say mountain got ears. But we are well able to take the city. Now, Sometimes you just say we're able. No, sometimes that mountain has to hear you say we're well able. Listen, here's what David said. He says, I'm going to conquer you. God's going to conquer you. I'm going to kill you. going to cut your head off. And then I'm going to, listen, I'm not going to just stop with you. I'm going to take all of the dead bodies of your men. And I'm going to feed them to the birds and the wild animals. And, and then the whole world is going to know every obstacle from this day on, every mountain from this day on, every challenge from this day on, every personality behind the challenge from this day on. Listen, they're going to know that God is a conquering God. And he says that everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and not with spear. For this is the Lord's battle. And David said to that obstacle, while you're listening, God's going to give it to us. And the giant went down as spoken with a smooth pebble and a sling. David killed him. What else did he do? Cut his head off. Gave. What did he do with the men that he promised he was going to do? Fed it to the birds, the wild animals. And listen, what happened after that? All of Israel came to know that the Lord, the host of heaven, fights for us. Well, if mountain have ears, and I'm almost done, but if mountain have ears, and they do, the wall of Jericho danced to the trumpet sound and did what? Fell down, collapsed. Wasn't nothing but a sound. Mountains have ears. And because of the sound of the trumpet and the shout and the timbrel and the dance, when they marched on the seventh day, seven times. And then the man of God said, on the seventh round, y'all shout. And that mountain said, oh, Lord, I hear some shouting. That's why some of y'all don't have to be pumped and primed when you come into settings like this. You ought to come in so that the mountain know you came meaning business. I didn't come to see. I didn't come to spectate. I didn't come to watch nobody. I didn't come to see what you're going to do. I come in with a shout because I want my mountain to know you're going down. Can I give you one better than that? Y'all yeah. remember the Red Sea, don't you? Yeah. Who was at the Red Sea? Moses. And who else? Children of Israel. And the Red Sea at that time was at its highest peak. And here they are. Pharaoh's army behind them. The Red Sea ahead of them. And the sea... Listened to the whispering of the voice of the wind. Moses heard the Lord say, stretch out your rod. And when Moses stretched out his rod, God blew. <sighs> Hallelujah, somebody. And the Red Sea heard the whispering of the wind and all of a sudden 
we better back up. And it went back up like a wall. It moved at the voice of the wind. What was that wind? It was the wind of God. It was the Holy Spirit that was blowing on the water. And you know when water and spirit comes together, something happens. Somebody in here shout miracle. Because whenever water and spirit comes together, a miracle takes place. You don't believe it? Go all the way back to the book of Genesis in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. And then he came back on the next day. And there were the infirmaments of the earth. And that was water. And that was spirit. And God said something. Somebody shout yes. Honey, I sense water and spirit mixing right now while we're in here. And while it is mixing, you got to understand that when God blew on that water, the breath of his spirit, the water divided, backed up like a wall. And God gave Moses the clearance and said, y'all come on through. It was the whispering of the wind that the mountain heard. Some of y'all don't know God is whispering into your situation right now. And the obstacle is hearing the whispering of the Holy Spirit. And so, tell somebody a miracle is happening right now. All you need to do is give voice to that miracle by just shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's blowing on my stuff right now. The breath of his spirit and all he needs from you is a praise to bring it through. Somebody shout hallelujah. I got one more for you. When they brought Jesus from the judgment hall, they marched him where? Where did he go from the judgment hall? Huh? He went to Golgotha. Where did Golgotha sit? On the hill. On the top of the hill. Mounted. And they marched Jesus all the way up there. And from the sixth to the ninth hour. Mountains. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. I said mountains. They're down at the foot of the cross gambling for his garment. Thief taunted him and said, if you are who you say you are, come down and save us and save yourself also. And to that taunt, he didn't say a mumbling word. All of a sudden, the other one says, Lord, when you're coming to your kingdom, he said, remember me. Help me, somebody. I told you that mountains will recognize whether you're speaking fear or whether you're speaking faith. Now, the mountain heard one man speak fear, but he said, hold on. There's another one that says, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. He just spoke some faith. And so the mountain started shaking. But I heard somebody speak to the mountain by the way of a Roman soldier and say, just hold on. He ain't dead yet, but we're going to get him. Help me somebody. And the mountain got some courage. And say, all right. I just heard something that encouraged me. Jesus is going down. So y'all just keep right where you are, doing what you do, and watch this Jesus who says he is the son of God die. Man, that encouraged me. Let, let, let me speak to Golgotha and tell Golgotha to get ready. And while you speak to Golgotha, you speak to the grave and tell the grave on the other side of Golgotha, get ready because the mountain is coming down. Help me some. Listen. And Jesus all of a sudden cried out, It is finished. Now, here's what I want you to do. You make sure you put a pen right there where Jesus says it is 
finished. Because if the Lord tarries and I come back next week, which is Family and Friends Day, I want to talk to some of your family and your friends along with you. And I want to take up to where he cried and it's finished. Because when we flip back over or get back to the fourth chapter of Zechariah, you're going to see where he was called the capstone or the cornerstone. And the capstone means that we're putting the finishing touch on it. Somebody shout yes. It is. Look, 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 look down your row and tell somebody he's capping this thing off of me right now. Somebody look down your row and say Jesus is capping this thing off. When is he doing it? Today. Somebody shout today. So here's what happened. He cried, it is finished. Hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and the scripture says he gave up the ghost. They came along, a day or so later, takes him down, places him in a borrowed tomb. And the mountain said, we got him now. But the mountain started saying to the other mountain, I ain't quite sure. Because I heard him say, they're going to destroy this temple. Going back to Zerubbabel. But in three days, he's going to raise it up again. Y'all better watch out. Here's what the mountain ended up doing. Sin drank the blood of Jesus while he was on the hill called Golgotha. While he was on the cross, sin drank the blood of Jesus that dripped down on that mountain. And the blood that spoke forgiveness spoke to Satan and says now I've got the keys of death hell and the grave it is finished I am victorious and if you'll just watch me all power is given unto me and if you speak to the mountain, I've given you power that if you just speak to the mountain, when the mountain hears you, they'll recognize me and my power. And you'll start seeing it coming down to a plane. So, Zachariah tells Zerubbabel that this doesn't happen by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And if the Lord tarries when I come back next week, if the Lord allows us to come back next week, if he tarries and brings us back next week, I want to go right back into Zechariah chapter 4. And I want to deal some more with those passages of Scripture. Because you got to understand what was finished. And some of y'all need to know that what you are seeing right now is not the finished product. Can you just lean down your row and say, this is just the beginning. <laughs> Father, would you let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. I want everybody that's wanting to stand on behalf of somebody that's not here today. A family member, a friend, an enemy. I want
want everybody to want to stand on behalf of somebody today, a son, a daughter, a mother, a father. I want you to stand. If you have a desire to speak into this atmosphere today on behalf of somebody, I want you to open your mouth right now and just speak to the Lord what you desire to put out concerning any mountain today. Go ahead and speak to it right now. Just open your mouth and just start speaking it out. Open your mouth and just say it. Pull your, pull your mask down. Open your mouth and just say it in the atmosphere. Or leave it up as long as you open your mouth and say something right now to some mountain, some obstacle, some challenge, some issue that you recognize right now. Let that obstacle, that mountain, that challenge hear you say something to it right now by faith in Jesus' name. Mountain of sickness, I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Financial difficulty, mountain of financial difficulty, I speak financial blessings right now on somebody's behalf. Mountain of confusion, I speak peace right now on somebody's behalf. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and speak whatever you want to speak now. And do it in Jesus' name. And do it by faith. And if whatever you spoke was by faith, I want you to just throw your hands up right now and say, God, I bless you that it's done in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah, it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, it's done in, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. They are healed. They are delivered. They are blessed. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is so. Hallelujah. Strength is coming back into that body right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Strength is coming into that body, into that life, into those vessels, into those muscles. Strength is coming right now. Peace is coming. Even while we are speaking right now, it's already happening in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Come on, open your mouth and bless him in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got to remember you're doing this on somebody else's behalf. You're speaking to that mountain on somebody else's behalf. Go ahead and act like it's already taking place. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said you're doing it on somebody else's behalf. I thank you that leaders are lining up with your word. I thank you, God, that leaders are lining up with your word. That you're giving them a hunger and a thirst now for righteousness and for ministry like never before. I thank you for the unity among your people. We bless you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Thank you that you're healing somebody's broken heart mending somebody's wounded spirit today. We give you glory for that now, God. And we bless you in Jesus' name. There's somebody here today that's not saved and want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Would you step out in this center aisle right now? If you've got to cross over somebody, just say to them, excuse me, i got to get to Jesus today. And they're going to encourage you to go. Somebody that's not saved, Get out in this center aisle right now. If you're not saved and want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come on out into the center aisle now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody that want to repent of your sins, confess that you are a sinner, repent of your sins today, ask Jesus to be your Savior. We've got people waiting to pray with you, share God's word with you. Come on and step out in this aisle today. Somebody shout today, today, today. Come on and step out today. Is there one? Is there one? Anybody that's a backslider, want to renew your fellowship with the Lord? Come on and step into the aisle today. Pastor, I backslidden, but today I want to renew my fellowship with the Lord. First John 1 and 9 says, if we'll confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Get in this aisle now, if that's you. 
Is there one? If there's somebody here without a church home today, and the Lord has spoken to you concerning this place of worship, this community of believers here at 838 Moravia Street, you can come by letter, candidate for baptism, Christian experience, or reinstatement. Step out from where you are and come today if that's you. That's you. Step into the center out. Is there one? Then if not, how about we've already spoken to the mountain? Somebody give God praise today and thank God for the word. Next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday is Family and Friends Day. Please invite somebody to come and worship with you. Bring somebody along with you. Bring them to hear the word, to share the fellowship with us on next Sunday. Sunday school starts at 8.15. I wish you all could have been here today if you wasn't here to see how God's growing our youth and children's classes. And I wish you could have heard. I want to commend Superintendent Shirley Boston and all of our teachers and instructors. But I wish you could have seen the youth class, the A-team, and, and the next group up. Uh, children's class, I wish you could have seen and see what God is doing into, in those classes. And we had a young lady, Jocelyn, this morning, put out a challenge. She said, well, since I'm the only one in my class, she said, I have to come up here and talk every Sunday, so I'm inviting some of y'all to come. Now, Jocelyn is what age? What age is, is Jocelyn? Huh? 15? She put a challenge out. For all of y'all in that age group to come out so she won't have to be the only one talking every Sunday. So we invite you, parents, get on board and let's get our children and ourselves to Sunday school. We had a great lesson today. Brother Jay Carlton broke the lesson down. Everybody participated in it. Come on out and get involved in Sunday school. I know it's an early hour, but we used to do 8 o'clock service, get here at 7.30 in the morning. You, you, got, you got 45 minutes later now that you can be here. So please come out and be a part of the Sunday school. And let's stay and come next week for our family and friends day. And right after the conclusion of the service, we plan to come down, the ministers and officers, we plan to come down on that fifth Sunday and greet you as you're going out the door next week. But we won't stand, talk a long time with you. We just want to greet you, say hello to you and uh, let you know we are touchable uh, next Sunday on Family and Friends Day. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for what you do for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. It is now time to sow. Yeah. It is time to sow. And some of y'all really need to start speaking to that mountain. Some of y'all need to say to that mountain, I'm going to obey God in giving this year of my tithes and offering. And don't let that mountain dictate to you and tell you what you can't do. You tell that mountain what you're going to do. Amen? It's time to sow. I'm going to say it again. It's time to sow. Freely you have received, now let's freely give. There are persons that are going to be standing at the door with baskets, and as you exit through those doors, please don't forget to give of your tithes and your offerings. Father, thank you today for everything we have received in Jesus' name. Thank you for helping us and teaching us today the mountain language, how to speak to our mountains, our situations, our circumstances, our obstacles, our challenges, and yes, even our joys, and even to our blessings, so that we can add many things to those blessings. We thank you for your word today, and every person who have received your engrafted word with joy. Bless every home represented here today. Bless every person under the sound of my voice. And now, Father, bless those that are now 
ready to give of their tithes and their offerings. Father, we honor you today with our tithes and our offerings. And we trust you, Holy Spirit, to do everything you say you will do for us as we honor you with our giving. And then speak to the hearts of every one of us. Speak to us, God, about our giving. In Jesus' name, give us a heart to follow you and obey your word as it pertains to giving. In Jesus' name. Who are you, O oh great mountain? We're believing every one of us are going to become a 100% tither in Jesus' name. And we speak that by faith. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody buy into it. We speak it by faith in Jesus' name. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and keep giving you his shalom, his peace. May he bless you in your basket, your field, your store, and your barn. Bless you down, sitting up, rising, going out, coming in. Bless your seed and your seed's seed from this time forth and even forevermore. And may God grant unto every one of you traveling grace and mercies and no weapon that is formed against you or your seed or your seed seed will prosper, but that you will overcome and prevail and conquer in Jesus' name. And from all of my family and myself, we love every one of you, and we say to you, God, be with all of you, is our prayer, Jesus. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.